if we ask you what is the one measure that determines the success and failure of a government and a political leader the most common answer would be the economic growth achieved by the nation in his tenure from the 10th largest economy in 2014 india's economy is now the fifth largest behind and thus economic growth and individual's prosperity becomes of utmost importance in policy making of the government nda ke teesre term mein is desh ki economy duniya mein teesre number par ho ke rahe we all see political parties making certain economic promises before an election but the concern for economic prosperity of people and one's nation is not just limited for the present times this was the case even in the past for example great king like shivaji maharaj is not remembered and celebrated the way he is today just for his great deeds on battlefield yes there are a major reason but one of the important aspect of shivaji maharaj history is the economic growth and prosperity and the welfare of people that he had achieved in his kingdom shivaji maharaj had used certain economic principles to boost the economic growth of his kingdom as well as the welfare and prosperity of his people so what are the insights we can get from shivaji maharaj's economic principles and can those principles be used for india in today's times watch this video till the end let us know if you could relate to shivaji maharaj's economic principles we would like to hear your thoughts as to how these principles can be used for the progress of new india leave a comment below in 17th century agriculture was the chief occupation of people in india to encourage and help people in agriculture shivaji maharaj gave loans to buy grains cattle and seeds these loans were to be repaid in a span of around 2 years secondly if someone needed oxen plow or other equipment for farming the kind of expenditure termed as capital expense in today's terms then an interest free loan was given to procure it shivaji maharaj asked his government's representatives to work on ground understand where people are lacking and help the people where help is actually needed instead of just giving out freebies to become popular like in today's times shivaji maharaj also asked his representatives to ensure that the money that has been given is being used for the right cause and it is not being misused shivaji maharaj allowed his people to pay taxes in cash or in kind this helped his people to manage a high supply low demand situation in which selling crops to generate cash to pay tax is difficult in a vice versa situation it also kept inflation in his kingdom at a stable rate at all times due to availability of crops in his warehouses shivaji maharaj had abolished all the authorities from collection of tax he had kept only one central tax that was collected by his own government in one of his letters to his officers shivaji maharaj reminded him that even a slight injustice and oppression of the people would displease him this shivaji maharaj's people oriented policy helped his people to gain prosperity and people of other territories were also keen for his kingdom to expand in their regions thus due to his economic principles shivaji maharaj always got support of the local people in a conflict situation with other kingdoms today the biggest challenge faced by small indian entrepreneurs is the competition from low cost chinese goods in the market now believe me or not a similar situation existed in shivaji maharaj's era merchants in his dominions were buying cheap salt available in neighboring portuguese colony of goa and selling it in his region at lower price than the local producers of the salt when shivaji maharaj came to know about this he wrote a letter to the officer on the trade route from goa to take the custom duty on the salt imported from goa 
This helped to balance the price of salt and now the competition would be on quality and service instead of just cost. Thus Shivaji Maharaj protected his local salt industry against foreign competition. Medieval era was a period of European prosperity. Trade with Europeans was booming. The English, the French, Portuguese, the Dutch, the Danes all had set up their factories in India. Shivaji Maharaj welcomed the Europeans to set up factories in his kingdom. There used to be regular trade between the Europeans and the Marathas. And mind you, that was not just one way. Along with welcoming Europeans to set up factories in India, it can be seen from the English documents that Shivaji Maharaj's merchant fleet plied as far as the Persian Gulf and Red Sea. But Shivaji Maharaj had also realized that the Europeans have the ambition to grab the political power in India. It can be clearly seen from a document drafted by Shivaji Maharaj's minister in which he states that the Europeans should not be allowed to settle permanently. Their factories should be in exterior parts and that too within range and control of strong forts. It also mentions that Europeans should not be allowed inside the sea forts which are important from defense point of view. The infrastructure in his kingdom, like forts, trade routes, was built and maintained by his own people. Barring a help from Portuguese to build his initial ships in his navy, Shivaji Maharaj did not involve Europeans in infrastructure and defense projects or any kind of government services in his kingdom. When the British stepped out of their line and helped Shivaji Maharaj's enemies, he raided their factories. In another instance, Shivaji Maharaj inflicted an economic loss on the British by using trade tactics. If we compare this with today, we can see that the Chinese have built important infra projects in foreign nations and later have claimed their authority on that infra by debt trapping the nation. Shivaji Maharaj was a very wise and a smart man. He was way ahead of his times. He knew Europeans would do the same like the Chinese today if they are involved in key projects and hence he didn't involve them in any. He built his own local team to build his infrastructure. Shivaji Maharaj had understood what his people needed. He knew how to get the best out of them. He always went out of the way to support his people. And that is why he is remembered, celebrated and adored even today that is 350 years after his existence. Shivaji Maharaj knew his political rivals and economic competitors very well. His policy with the foreigners is best described by the English president in India. He called Shivaji Maharaj their fairest friend and noblest enemy. If you got something of value from this video, hit like, share the video, subscribe to the channel. As mentioned earlier, we would like to hear your thoughts on this. So leave a comment below. Shivaji Maharaj had inflicted economic loss on the British East India Company by using trade tactics. Watch this video by clicking here.